Alright, this is a video that has been uh, quite far overdue. Here you see my Garmin GPS 12CX handheld GPS from 1999. You may remember that I bought this last year on eBay. Most expensive thing I ever bought on eBay, I bought it for $64. However, I got half that money back when I discovered, upon getting it, that the memory battery inside the GPS which is required for the GPS to retain any stored information such as waypoints when it's turned off, that memory battery was dead. The seller did not know that, and I got half my money back. These older Garmin GPSs with the built-in memory uh, battery, they're not very fun to use once the memory battery dies. It uh, makes them kind of useless. However, it is perfectly possible to replace a battery, and that's what I will hopefully do today in this video. Now, uh, if you've come here in search of memory battery replacement instructions for another member of the Garmin GPS 12 series, then you're in luck because I believe that everything I'll show today is applicable across the entire GPS 12 line. Uh, if you have a GPS from another line, such as the, uh, what's another one, I, I suppose the GPS 3 and the GPS 2 series, um, I suppose the basic instructions would be the same, but of course the layout inside the GPS is going to be different and stuff, so I, I don't really know about that, but definitely uh, everything you'll see here today is applicable across the entire GPS 12 line. I bought a battery on eBay. Now unfortunately, I accidentally bought the wrong type. The battery itself is, is exactly the same type. If I remember right, it's a Panasonic VL1220, I think. The battery itself is the right type, but the mounting tabs I got, I wasn't looking closely enough in the picture, the mounting tabs are the wrong type. But I should still be able to shoehorn it in there. If not, I guess I'll buy another battery. Now, I bought this battery, and the date's actually on it. Computer part. Uh, eight, eight, August of 2013, so yeah, it's been quite a few months. Hopefully the battery's still charged. If not, I suppose I can hook it up to a couple of AAA batteries or something to charge it. Panasonic VL1220, an actual Panasonic battery, not some generic equivalent. I think perhaps Panasonic's the only one that makes this, but this is a battery that's inside, I think, every Garmin GPS that uses a memory battery. I think it's all the same type, the VL1220. It's a uh, rechargeable lithium battery. I think it's 3.3 volts. But anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'll get my multimeter and measure the voltage across it. Uh, it's a little low, 2.8 volts, so uh, I think I'll connect, I actually have a 3 volt uh, lithium battery, a camera battery hanging around here. I'll connect them up and uh, give this battery a bit of a charge. Now, the ability for this thing to retain information when it's turned off is not the only reason to replace the memory battery. Um, this GPS started doing something a little bit weird not too long after I made the original video of it. Um, what started happening was I'd put I'd have fresh main batteries inside it But it would act like they were dead it would turn on for a few seconds say low main main batteries low And then it was shut off and when I went to the diagnostic page and I looked at the voltages It, it shows the voltage for both the main batteries and the power if you have a 12 volt power source plugged in it um, If I had just batteries in it, but no power source plugged in it it would split the voltage of the batteries between the batteries and the power source. So let's say the batteries were fresh and they made 6 volts. The diagnostic screen would say that the batteries were 3 volts and there was 3 volts coming in through the, uh, the power source, which is really weird. Um, and that's why the GPS thought the batteries were low. It was seeing only 3 volts. Um, same thing, if I plugged in a 12 volt power source and had no batteries in it, it would split the 12 volt power source between 6 and 6 but of course that was enough for it to function but it, it's really weird and I asked on the uh, a group I used to be on, a Usenet group, I'm not on it anymore but a uh, GPS Usenet group and I asked on the group, I, I said what could be causing this really weird behavior and I mentioned that the memory battery was dead and uh, a couple people replied and basically the general consensus is that the memory battery in this GPS is probably so bad that it's actually beginning to short out the power circuitry and cause it to act really weird. Basically the power circuitry is just going crazy and that's why it's splitting the voltages and it's caused by the really extremely dead memory battery. So uh, that basically renders this GPS completely unusable. 
uh, on batteries anyway, perhaps still usable on a 12 volt power source, but how much use is that? So, what I'm going to do, or attempt to do in this video, is crack this GPS open and uh, solder in that new memory battery. Now, um, again, what you're going to see here should be applicable across all the GPS 12 series. As for the others, I can't speak for them. So, beginning here, um, no screws hold this together. Uh, this is completely sealed with a uh, silicone type sealant around the perimeter of the GPS. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab a knife or something, scrape out that silicone sealant, and once I get it as cleaned off as I can, basically what you have to do is stick a flat object in that groove and basically twist it and try to literally crack the case open. Um, I'm kind of nervous doing that. I'm hoping I don't break anything. It's going to be a real bummer if I do. But uh, let's see what happens. Now, if we open the battery compartment here. I had batteries in it. I was going to turn it on, but no use. Still works the same. When it hasn't been in use, in use for a long time, the power problem doesn't surface. It surfaces after about an hour or so. So that ceiling goes around there too. And uh, basically, I'm, I guess I'll just grab my pocket knife or something and... Uh, start scraping the stuff out. Now I'll do it on video here. I have not done this before yet, so uh, let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, it's kind of soft, kind of rubber-like. Yeah, so uh, scrape that out, and yeah, that's what it looks like. So, I'll just take my knife and scrape it all out, and uh, then we'll return. Okay, so I got all the silicone out, made the GPS kind of messy. It's got little blobs of rubber everywhere. But, uh, I think I got all of it out. Went behind the battery compartment, too. And, uh, now the next step is just try to literally stick something in there and crack the case open. I will do this on video since this is probably the most risky part so you guys can watch and see what I do. It'll probably have to be edited because this might take a while. Now, what to use? I don't think I'll use my knife. I will try flat bladed screwdriver. Um, let's see. I guess I'll just... Oh, holy cow, that was easy. That literally just... Oops. Uh-oh, did I scratch it? Nope. Gotta be careful. I'm just sticking the screwdriver in and gently twisting it. And this side of the case has already come apart, I think. Oh. I am putting little dents in the case, so you gotta be careful. I'm, uh... If you get a look at that... Uh... Yeah, I'm putting little indentations in the case, so I'm gonna be a little more careful. Yeah, this side of the case is pretty much apart. Let me try this side. Yeah, you can hear the cracking. Not bad cracking either. A little bit of silicone still scraping out of there. All over my avocado green bed sheet. Crack. What about over back here? It's, it's definitely coming apart. It's wiggling around now. Let me do the top here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an apart GPS. I think I can pull it apart from here on. Maybe not. Let me get the battery compartment side. Done. Done. We have an apart GPS. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I'm really quite pleased with that, even if I did put a couple of dents in the case of the GPS. Okay, so the unit comes apart. Oh, and by the way, when we're inside here, um, this should be pretty cool. 
because we should find an Intel 8386 microprocessor in there. Now, it's been a while since I last read how to do this, but there's a connector in here that I have to uh, disconnect, and we can completely separate the two halves. So, let me do that again, put the camera down. No, this is great. I'm pleased with this because I think this video will help a lot of people with these particular GPS units because I've just proved that it's completely possible to do even for a, someone like me who's never done this before okay I'm, I'm trying to finger that connector out there's also a wire connecting the antenna as well the antenna jack um, what the hell what the this what the hell this GPS has a completely different type of battery in it. Oh my goodness, you gotta be kidding me. This is like the only Garmin... What? A VL1220, that's what I... Holy crap. You gotta be kidding me. That's a completely different type of battery. Let me read if I can see what type it is. This is disappointing, I'll... I guess I'll just go on eBay and buy another battery. It is a... Wow, it's a BR2032. The rechargeable version of the CR2032. That's like one of the most common... Oh my gosh. At least I think BR means it's rechargeable. Wow. Well, this is a mixed blessing, because it's a really common battery, but at the same time, I don't have it on hand to replace. Um... I actually read about a, using a BR2032 before, but I thought that was other models of GPS. Wow. Well, I'll have to tell this on the group. This will be useful information. I'm still attempting to separate the two halves. We have connector separation. The antenna, that white, that silvery wire right there, that's, that connects the external antenna jack to the main board. Um, I thought that should be separatable. But it doesn't appear it is. There's no connector. It's just soldered directly on there. But uh, undoing that connector is enough to usefully separate the halves of the GPS. Then we have right there an Intel 8386EX microprocessor, the low power version of the 386, 16 megahertz, I believe. And there's that darned old battery, a completely different type. I heard something about a BR2032, but I thought it was wrong. Because I believe other members of the 12 series use a VL1220. I'll have to check up on that. But in any case, this is what my unit has. Uh, it appears to be connected via wires. That's really nice. And it appears to have a sticky pad adhering the battery to the antenna uh, plate. Up there, don't confuse this with a battery. I think I saw someone confuse this with a battery once. That's the uh, speaker, the beeper. Well, okay, I think that's all there is to show for now. I'll uh, poke around in here a bit more, take a closer look at the battery, and uh, if I have anything to report, I'll be back. So, I just came across some interesting news. The BR2032 is not rechargeable. It is simply a variant of the CR2032 that has less capacity, a lower discharge rate, a slightly lower voltage, and a wider uh, range of temperature that it can be operated at. It's basically a, a, a bit beefier version of a CR2032. So this renders everything I've ever read, at least about the GPS-12CX, I don't know about the other ones, but uh, it's not even a rechargeable battery. So it is impossible to find a Garmin GPS-12CX with a good memory battery. No matter how well it, it was kept over the years, the battery will die. It's not rechargeable. Um, this is great news because I can just replace this with a CR2032. It's like the cheapest, most commonly available battery around. I might have a good one here. I don't think I do, but I might. That's excellent. Um, these tabs, though. So, what I might, uh, I might see if I can somehow rip or desolder these tabs from this battery and solder them back on whatever replacement battery I get which will be probably a CR2032. I uh, measured the voltage of the battery and it's 0.04 volts. Absolutely stone cold dead. 
Now, this slightly worries me because I had assumed that, uh, or at least I was told, when we all assumed that, uh, this was a rechargeable battery, that it was so dead it was shorting out the charging circuitry. Well, there is no charging circuitry. This is a non-rechargeable battery. So, it might not be the battery causing this GPS to act really weird, um, sometimes. Hopefully, it's just, just simply because it's so dead. Perhaps it's, uh acting really weird that way but uh, at any rate I'll get a new battery on there and uh, see if it fixes everything hopefully alright we're back so here's here's the story the old battery I could not get the tabs off it they were welded on there somehow and when I did successfully get one off by tearing it off with my own hands um, I absolutely could not get it soldered on to the new battery. I found a, a new CR2032 battery, could not get one of the tabs soldered on at all. Whatever metal the battery is made out of does not allow for soldering. Then again, I'm using cheap Chinese lead-free solder. Perhaps that was a problem, I don't know. So what I decided to do instead was use the VL1220 uh, battery. I connected it to a... Uh, a dead 6 volt battery that read about 4.5 volts connected that up and held it there for about 30 seconds that charged the battery up to about 3.3 uh, volts which I think is nominal fully charged voltage and uh, actually I should read that right now because I figure if I I might as well use this battery because if I don't it's just going to go to waste I have nothing else that I can use it in even though it's not going to be charged and therefore might not last very long, but let's see what our voltage is. Hopefully it won't be... Uh, yeah, it's a little bit low. Then again, the nominal voltage of the original battery, the BR2032, would have been 2.8 volts. So that's still not too bad. So it went down because it is, technically, the memory uh, circuitry should be alive now. Uh, for all intents and purposes, electrically, this GPS is now fixed. The memory circuitry is currently powered by that battery. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to connect that motherboard connector back in. We're going to stick batteries in this thing and see if it turns on without giving us a memory battery error. So, let me just rearrange this and uh, plug the connector back in, throw some batteries in, let's see what happens. Okay, batteries are in. Let's see what happens when I hit the power. Okay, we're turned on. We might get an error message still, because it would have erased anyway. Okay. No memory battery low. That's it. This, this success. This thing is fixed. Now, as I said, I am slightly worried, because first of all, I've used a very low capacity battery that's meant to be recharged it might only last a little while I don't know but uh, I figure I'll try it for now because I looked on eBay and by the looks of it I'm gonna pay like five or six bucks for a CR2032 or a BR2032 with tabs it's quite a bit of money as it is I paid like three or four bucks for this VL1220 so I might as well use it we'll see how long it lasts uh, the last step to do now is uh, I'm going to wrap this battery in uh, electrical tape or something, just so nothing shorts out, and uh, stick it back in here. And to seal the case back up, you know, it's not going to just snap together, we have to seal it up with something. I have read that uh, putting some RTC, I think it's called R RTC, RTC silicone, or perhaps it was RTX. Anyway, RT something silicone around the outside of the case. We'll uh, seal it back up, and it's close to the spec specifications of the original sealant that would have been used at the factory. And uh, we will now have a perfect working GPS-12CX. Excellent. Now, if we go into the menu here... Oh, jeez, I forget how to use this thing. And we go to Messages not a one so yeah this thing is now getting uh, memory now we can test that still now this is still looking for satellites but uh, what I can do is I can just make a waypoint where I am uh, let's go up here make a waypoint 
Uh, I quit. I want a new waypoint. Mark. I forget how to use this thing. Mark waypoint, we'll call it. Yeah, okay, save. So, should have made a new waypoint called 001 somewhere. Where'd it go? Oh, it actually got a signal now. I think we're getting a signal. Yes, we are getting a signal. So, let me shut this thing off. And we'll wait a good 10 seconds or so. Turn it back on. And our waypoint should still be there. Go to. There's our waypoint. So yeah. We now have a perfect working GPS. I'm just going to isolate the battery. i got to go to Canadian Tire and buy something to seal the case back up. And uh, we will be good to go. I like it. Okay. I've wrapped some black tape around the battery and just uh, kind of let it hang there. It's not going to hurt anything not being adhered. We're back. Eight dollars at Canadian Tire. Got me this. It's called RTV silicone is what it is. So uh, I got this. Came with an applicator there and uh, I've read the instructions and uh, basically what I'm going to hopefully try and do is um, how this goes together is, see there's a little groove there and the other half of the case presses into that groove. So what I'm going to try to do is put the silicone in that groove which runs all the way around the unit and then I have to keep the halves pressed together for like at least half an hour or something. So I get a bunch of rubber bands to try and help me do that. and. Uh, after an hour or so it should be set and then after 24 hours it'll be at a uh, full strength. Let me undo the cap and see what this stuff looks like. Okay, I gotta punch a hole in the tube. Ooh, it's got quite a smell to it. it. Smells like vinegar. Well there's the stuff anyhow, it's just a clear gel. But uh, yeah, obviously I'm gonna do this on the floor, not my bed. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay, let's uh, see what goes bang. I couldn't get the uh, piercing thing to make a hole in the applicator, so I just cut the tip off with scissors. Okay, let's uh, see what happens. I have no idea where or how to start. I'm just, uh, oh, I'm not even in the frame. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of squirting it along that groove. Oh man, this is going to be messy. I'm scared I'm going to take too long and it's going to start drying before I even get the GPS together. Oh man, I'm getting this everywhere. Oh, getting it on my fingers. Hope it's not as irritative as it says it is. You know, I should have done this with the halves of the GPS separated. Oh, the connector came off by itself. That helps. Yeah, I know this isn't in the frame, but I'm not going to set this down to rearrange the camera. This would have been a lot easier if there were a way to remove the external antenna cable. At least it wipes off easy. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to stick this together as is for now. Ah, I think I figured it out now. I'm getting this on the GPS's case now, so I hope it doesn't harm the finish on the plastic. I mean, I'm getting it on the outside of the case now. I'm just going quite fast this is a very fast messy job I'm doing if I had the proper tools I could probably do it better alright I'm gonna press it together I'm gonna wipe off any on the outside Oh, it's starting to get a bit hard already. It's kind of like glue and rubber all in one. Now it's classified as a skin irritant, so I'm going to make sure and uh, wash my hands when I'm done here. I, I, think, I think we're done. I know I got nothing of that on camera, so I apologize. But uh, I, had to, I just had to do this all in one take, so uh, I couldn't really help it. I just did a rather fast, messy job all around the perimeter of the uh, case. I'm just wiping off any extraneous stuff that's uh, made its way outside.
to the outside of the case. The case is actually together now, like it's not coming apart, but what I'm going to do anyway, where's my rubber bands? I'm going to take my rubber bands, okay, there's one, and I'm going to get another. Actually, I'm going to get a tissue to put out on, just to lay on top of the display, since I don't want the elastic band to scratch up the display. That's even possible for an elastic band to scratch something. And, uh, that's pretty much it. So, I took this and, uh, went around the entire perimeter of the case while it was slightly open, but not quite. I originally tried to get it in the groove that's on the bottom half of the case, but that was kind of too fumbly to do. So I just had the case slightly separated and just squirted it in, you know, the spacing and then put it together, wiped off any extraneous stuff, and already it's uh, held together, and you can't really see it. It doesn't, it, it looks actually almost like the factory sealant. Not as clean, but uh, you know, it's, it's not particularly messy looking. I guess maybe I should have been, had a bit of a second thought as to what to use to separate the case originally, because this flat bladed screwdriver I use, it left those picks in the plastic. Perhaps I'll sand those off. So uh, I'll let it sit like this with the elastics on it for a few hours and uh, then we'll see how it held up. Yeah, I know. You guys were probably yelling at me through your computer screens. I forgot to put that darn connector back in before I sealed this thing up. So an hour later when I realized it, I had to rip this thing apart again. But good news. I have some good news out of that. Uh, that stuff does hold really well. Um, I had to take the flat bladed screwdriver to this thing again just like I had to do with the factory adhesive so uh, this thing was even only after an hour and it takes 24 hours to cure this thing was bonded just as strongly as it was with the original adhesive so that's good. So I have to clean all that up again and then seal this thing again this time with that darn connector in there. Alright it's the next day I, uh, after that second time I glued this thing together, I, uh, fell asleep on the floor and dreamt I was pooping out unicorns. I'm not sure how that happened, but, uh, anyway, uh, this thing is finally completely finished. Now, you might see, it's kind of dirty looking in the groove there. What I did was I took some fine grain sandpaper and sanded off the little bumps that were on the outside of the plastic there. Just because I didn't like how it felt, and as you can see, it's made the plastic itself smooth, of course, sanded the finish off it. So all in all, this GPS is no longer as mint and pretty as it used to be, but uh, at least now, we finally have a working memory battery. Now, this has been sitting for 24 hours. Let's uh, plug it in. and see, uh, make sure it still works good. Alright. The fact that it didn't beep when I press buttons means it uh, retained the memory because I uh, I turned the beep off and there we go it says acquiring and because it remembered where on earth it is it's already getting a signal from a bunch of satellites and within a few seconds it should switch to the uh, position page because we acquired a signal and there we go and uh, if we go to the messages page not a one Good. I hope the battery I've put in this thing lasts at least a couple of years because I don't want to tear this thing open again anytime soon. Um, if the battery doesn't last any more than say four or five years, I will replace it with a BR2032. I went the cheap way out just after I saw how much I'd be paying for a, uh, uh, a BR2032 or a CR2032 with mounting tabs. So uh, I thought I might as well use the battery I had, which I already paid three or four bucks for. But uh, there you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you replace a memory battery on a Garmin GPS 12CX. Oh, I haven't mentioned yet. Um, I did some more reading online, and it turns out the GPS 12CX and the 12XL use the BR2032 battery. The GPS 12 uses a VL1220. As for the GPS 12 map, I don't know. I couldn't find any information about it. 
But uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, how you crack open a Garmin GPS 12 series handheld GPS and uh, replace a memory battery. I hope anyone who uh, came across this video because they needed to replace it in their own device found it very useful. And uh, I'm very happy that I got this very rare and unique GPS finally working perfectly and I look forward to using it. I uh, hooked it up to the computer. I already uh, transferred all my waypoints and stuff to it. You can see there. So there you go. I uh, Oh, and by the way, I... Uh, I ran this thing for quite a few hours on the diagnostic screen and not once did it ever do the funny battery voltage thing. So I'm hoping that solved that problem too. If it didn't, I'll, uh, I'll put an annotation here just to let you know. Hopefully it doesn't come back because if it does that probably means there's something electronically wrong with this thing that probably can't be, be fixed. But uh, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys next time.